I hope you got to lay, dance, bathe in the moonlight last night. Here on the East Coast, it was just intoxicating, full and scarred and yellow and embracing. Real mother energy there. Um, so I wanted to uh, let you know about a practice that I'm doing that has been so beneficial for me. Um, and I want to offer it to you and, and ho hope in the hopes that you will benefit too. So I am the deep, in the deep, <laughs> in the deep, for sure, <laughs> of some studies of different goddesses and their gifts um, to humanity, to ourselves. And the lessons that they always teach is um, the humanity of the highest self of our, um, the divinity. Uh, where our humanity expressed in its highest self is a form of divinity. Where when we honor our highest selves, our calling, our purpose, and who we really are, when we get back to that remembrance of it, how, power that, how powerful that can be in a beautiful, welcoming light that encompasses light and shadow and, and all of the above. So, um, but here's the practice that I am doing. So in this practice, um, there are pieces to read and study. And so what I am doing is I am taking them, I am putting them in the first person where it says, I will, I endeavor, I empower, and I am recording myself in my phone. So I'm using just simple voice memo, <laughs> press record and go and read it. I read slowly and deliberately. I allow my voice to take on the pitch that it does. Sometimes it's very soft and the syllables are drawn out. And sometimes it's a little stronger and I drive ahead. So I allow my kind of just natural actor to come out and, and really fill the words in. Um, and then the next morning or the next day or when I'm ready for my next meditation, that is the sound equ equivalent as I prepare my space and I go into my meditation. So basically you are recording your own voice to be the blessing that you give yourself. Especially if it's about self-love, self-acceptance, self-empowerment, so read in the first person to you and then you meditate and you let it flow through your body. You take it in on the mat and it has been profound. It has definitely embodied changes for me as I endeavor to move along my path. And, and I call on you if you have that itch to give that path some study, where are you? Do you need support and community? I think we all do right now. Reach out if you need it. This is a time where we will grow together or we will be silenced. I got a text this morning reference, referencing sudden adult death syndrome where people are just passing away. So to me, a life unexamined, it's kind of like the muscle you don't use atrophies. If you are active, if you are embodied, if you are on your path, even if you're struggling and floundering on your path, but you're making honest inquiries there, you're active. If you have internally given up, if you are no longer on the hunt, if you are no longer communing with yourself, even in a quiet way, I feel like that expiration will come sooner. I'm not saying these people brought it on themselves. I'm just saying that w the way that you live, the broader and the bigger you can live and the closer you can get 
to your soul's destiny. And you know what it is. It's just a matter of remembering, of getting out of your own way so that you can remember who you are and why you're here and what you're here to do. I push on that door every day. It is a daily practice. And to that end, I will never open that door without blessings from God, but from me too. You are the only one that can open that door and your relationship with the divine. So record a passage that really moves you from the Bible, from whatever you're studying in the first person because then you will live it. And then read it like the person that you're reading to you love, like a bedtime story for a precious person because you are one. And then relax into your own arms as your voice carries you. I'm telling you, it's been life-changing for me. It's been really altering. And I just offer that for you. And we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>